Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Noemi Guevara and we're going to let all of our participants come in to the Zoom um, webinar this afternoon. Um, again, my name is Noemi and I'm the Director of Alum Alumni Engagement and we're very excited today to have two of our alumni artists join us on this very fun activity that they have planned for us. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Philip and Jarvis, who will do a short introduction and get us started on the activity today. Thank you so much and take it away. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Philip Boutet, Jr. I am a CFULB alumni, Go Beach. Uh, I graduated in uh, spring 2006. Hey, hey, Jane and Peter, um, another alumni or other people that I know very well. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to just say hi to everybody and just introduce myself. I was in the illustration. I got a BFA in illustration at Long Beach. Um, and then I went on to do some really cool projects. But before I get into that, I want to uh, also introduce my buddy here, Jarvis Taylor, who is also in the illustration program. So Jarvis, tell him a little bit about yourself, please. Um, hello everyone, my name is Jarvis Taylor, uh, also graduated from Cal State Long Beach with a BFA in illustration in 2008. Um, after that, started working in the fashion world for about five years, um, and after that I've been freelancing ever since, so I've been freelancing both as an illustrator and as a graphic designer, and uh, it's pretty much it for the most part. Yeah, so it's like we kind of, me and Jarvis became friends uh, in school um, before I graduated, I think I'm two, uh, two years ahead of him. Um, and we actually kept in contact and became really good friends. And we also have some of the other alum alumni um, that kind of are in our specific group. And we all went on to do uh, various different projects. Um, the first thing I want to do is just if you're not familiar with my work, I want to show a reel and I want to share that with you guys. So I'm going to share that first just so you can get familiar with kind of what I do um, as a uh, working in film as a costume concept artist. So I will show that and all of the skills that I learned, I learned at Long Beach um, in the illustration program. So let me share my screen and I will show that now. on the line. showcases my work and kind of like what I do, right? Um, uh, and so I, uh, I've had, a, I've been really lucky. Um, thank you guys so much. I've been really lucky to do um, uh, this job. Um, I have to give all props and credits to uh, uh, an instructor that actually still teaches at Long Beach, uh, Robin Richardson. Um, uh, we all love her. She's wonderful. She taught us a lot. She basically kind of set my foundation for being in a place where um, I felt as though uh, I could expand my career. And I really uh, learned to love to draw from her. Like the love of drawing came from Robin and kind of her expanding our minds and forcing us to draw and to learn to love it. And, and basically, not even forcing us to draw, it's more so like making sure our foundation was strong. So like drawing terms of heads and hats and hands, like really understanding those things was like kind of the foundation that we had with Robin. Um, and also just being very gracious and sharing her career with us and showing us like what she did. Now Robin is very humble. So she would very rarely talk about what she did in her actual work outside of school. 
but she'd tell us every once in a while, we'd be like, oh, hey, Robin, what did you do during summer break? And she's like, oh, I storyboarded this film, Aeon Flux with Charlize Theron. And we're like, okay, that's cool. I know what that was from MTV. Or she'd say, oh, I costume illustrated these. And she'd show us, like, I did these costume illustrations for Forrest Gump or, uh, or Polar Express. So she would show us stuff that she was working on. You know, all the while we were teaching and learning and growing and doing all of that. So a little backstory before we get into our display um, of drawing. Um, uh, I, uh, as long as, as well as two other students, um, graduated spring of 2006 from Long Beach um, uh, with our illustration degrees. It was me, Oksana Nadavia, and uh, Brian Valenswith. We were all students of Robin um, and a few other student, uh, teachers that are still there, Rick Reese, um, uh, Mark Michelin, and I uh, was our instructor, all great. Uh, we just had a great time, all of them. Um, and uh, we graduated, and so we, that's in June. And in July, we went to Comic-Con. So we went to San Diego Comic-Con, and we decided we were going to try to get work. So the only thing we knew how to do is go somewhere. We were going to show our portfolios to, like, Wizards of the Coast and Blizzard and all these different companies that were hiring illustrators. And just by chance, when we got there, uh, we looked in the program, and we saw that uh, the Costume Designers Guild was going to be doing a panel of costume designers. Um, uh, you know, big Hollywood costume designers that were going to be there showing, you know, their work and explaining what they do. And we only recognized it because of Robin. So we said, oh, isn't that what Robin does? That's what Robin does for work, right? So we were like, yeah. So we're like, we should go to that. So we went to the panel, we sat down, we heard about their jobs, we saw the costumes they designed for the stuff. So there was Mrs. Moosenden who did Narnia, there was uh, Juliana McCoskey who did all the Harry Potter films or established Harry Potter and Hunger Games. So it's like, you know, later on, but it was like Harry Potter during that time. So we're like, these are big time designers, so we should show them our work. So after the panel, they let us know that there was an autograph, uh, an autograph uh, signing where they were going to go and do autographs and meet fans personally. So we were like, perfect, we'll go show our portfolios. So we waited, we went and showed our portfolios, I and mean, we went down the line. Now, Oksana is a really great uh, watercolor painter. So, uh, Oksana was going and she showed her portfolio and EC, the one that did Narnia, really liked her portfolio. Everybody took cards, we exchanged cards and we just went on about our day. So the rest of the day, we ended up going and, uh, and showing our portfolios to, uh, to different studios. We got portfolio reviews, it was just a normal day. That next week after Comic-Con, now granted, I'm just gonna keep bringing this up. This is a month after we graduated. So we just got out of school and we're in that phase where we're like, what are you gonna do with, what are we gonna do with our lives? How are we gonna work? What are we gonna do? Uh, that next week after Comic-Con, Oksana got a call from ECs who said, hey, how would you like to go to Prague with me for eight months to do Narnia 2? Straight out of school, just like that. So we're like, whoa, so Oksana calls me and she's super excited and she tells me that this is a real job and you know, tells me she's gonna be joining the Costume Designers Guild. And literally the week after she got the job, she was gone. So now she's gone, she's gone to Prague, and we're all going, whoa, that's a real job. So later that year, I had still been working and I was also production designing through school. So that means I was doing set design and, uh, and uh, music videos and stuff like that. I was doing set design for films and short films and stuff. So I still was working and trying to figure out the illustration thing. And uh, I ended up uh, joining the Costume Designers Guild late that year, that same year in December. So I joined the guild, and then that next month, I got hired on my first film, which was The Mummy 3, uh, with uh, Costume Designer Simon Hayes, so the one with Jet Li, and the, and the uh, was it Curse of the Dragon Emperor. So that was my first job, and then I've been working ever since. Brian... So that was now 2007. I started working in 2007. Towards the middle of 2007, after I'd been doing a few jobs, uh, Brian joined because he saw that me and Oksana were successful. And then Brian got onto the reboot of Star Trek with J.J. Abrams. So then he starts working. And then when I was finishing up jobs towards the end of the year, they needed another illustrator on Star Trek. So Brian told uh, Michael Kaplan, the costume designer, about me. And me and Brian finished out the first year, our first year working together on Star Trek. Um, so that's the three of us. And then since then, we've had Alan Villanueva, we've had Daryl Fuentes, we've had several different illustrators that have all since joined the guild, all from that same kind of group. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys all to let you know that it is possible 
to get work and to pay attention to your instructors. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Long Beach and what it taught me, the foundations it gave me, um, the experiences it gave me, and the fact that if you sometimes, like a lot of people go to trade schools, right? So you have Art Center, Nome, and all these different places, right? And they're like basically film development schools, right? And that's great because they do teach you the pipeline for that. There's some really great artists that come out of there. Um, the one thing that I really enjoyed personally about Long Beach was the uh, diversity in its program, meaning they taught us a little bit of everything, which now helps me in my career, which is I can switch styles between something that looks more realistic, something that looks 3D, or something that looks more traditional. And it's because I had those skills that I still use them today. So I just wanted to kind of tell you guys that. Um, and that's kind of how I got started. And I've just been, this is now my 13th year in this career. Um, I've worked on some pretty great projects, I have to say. Um, I'm currently at Marvel Visual Development working on Black Panther 2. Um, no, I can't tell you anything about it, but that's pretty much the best thing that I can tell you is that I'm working on that and that we're developing and kind of working through. Um, and it's been just kind of a wild ride. So I want to just bring, you guys can ask questions. Um, I'm going to um, give you a quick uh, uh, kind of promo of this program that we're going to be using. I'll type it into the chat. It is called Magma Studio. Um, and it was started uh, or co-founded and developed by uh, artist Bobby Chu. Some of you know who that is. Um, he's the founder and runner of Schoolism, which is uh, like one of the first, or I think it's the first online digital school for art. Um, so check them out, Schoolism. I actually write that down too. Um, they do all kinds of workshops and videos, and they're just a really, uh, and they also do, uh, if some of you are familiar with, they have now, they're the ones that started Lightbox Expo. Um, so check out all these terms. I've typed them into the chat. Um, and so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be drawing on a thing called Magma Studio. You can all go and try it out. It's uh, free. And Magma Studio basically allows you to start like a blank tab canvas within your browser, your, brow your uh, internet browser, and it's like Photoshop. So what that allows you to do is immediately, you can start a meeting with a friend, like I'm gonna do with Jarvis right now. We've put in, um, we've preloaded an image um, that I'll show you guys that we're gonna put into the uh, chat. I'll actually show it to you from, in stages. And we're literally in this camera that's gonna draw together at the same time. So it's the greatest thing and it can be multiple artists. So all across Lightbox during that whole weekend, artists were drawing with each other and we're gonna do that now. And then I'll just have a conversation, we'll talk um, and you guys can ask questions and we're just gonna have a little bit of fun. So we themed it as Afrofuturistic. Um, so we're gonna work off of an image and we're just gonna draw on top of it. So I'm going to share that now. So this is what uh, Magma Studio looks like when you open it up. So as you can see, you've got this blank canvas and we are going to draw on top of this very cool photograph of an Afrofuturistic scene. Um, and that's what we're gonna be doing. So if you guys have questions, ask away, anything at all for, um, for us as alumni or questions you're having about moving forward in your careers or anything. Um, and I'm just gonna have a like, like conversation with Jarvis where we kind of figure out how to kind of move forward with this, okay? Uh, let's get started, Mr. Jarvis. You ready? Yep. Let's All go. right. Okay. So I think what Jarvis said is we're going to, uh, we picked this image just because it's cool and we're completely about Afrofuturism at this point. So we've got the image open and as you can see now, we are going to uh, uh, start to just paint and draw. Travis, can you figure out how to do the eyedropper tool? Yeah, just hit I. Some of the buttons are just like Photoshop. So if okay. you hit I, it'll give it to you. There we go. Just like um, Command J will uh, duplicate a layer for you. Okay. So some of the um, 
quick keys are very, very similar. There we go. Philip, if some of our viewers have suggestions of what to add to the drawing, are you okay with that if they drop it in the chat? Sure. That's fun. Yeah. Oh, whatever you do, Phil, when you hit enter, it's going to bring up a little message box. So, oh, enter. Okay. I did, yeah, I did that a whole bunch of times. Like, so what is going right. on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So, Jarvis, what I was going to say, it's option. I want to just sample without having to go to eyedropper. So, if you hold option, it'll sample and you can keep paying. Oh, okay. Anybody got any questions so far? Um, I see that one. Greatest accomplishment. Um, I don't know. I think work, like work wise, I mean, I, I'm sure Jarvis will agree with me and it's cheesy, but I think for us, any great, our greatest accomplishment, I think are our kids. It's like, I think that that's kind of like something I think life wise, I try to do that. If you're talking about like work wise, I think, uh, 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 I'd want to say, I feel like for me, Black Panther was a uh, Black Panther was a real um, accomplishment for me. Um, it was a full circle moment for me. So um, I think I was an actor. I was an actor. So that's another thing. So I, I should come into that. I was a child actor from like three until like seventeen, right? So I was kind of in the business beforehand, and I've been on shows and I've done commercials done a few things um, uh, like where I've been working and you know kind of doing that whole thing and so I had a love for entertainment before I even got into drawing um, and I think that uh, um, I stopped working I mean just in light of everything that's even going on in the country right now it's, there's a lot of happening worldwide right so I remember during this time uh, I got frustrated because a lot of the roles that I was being offered as I transitioned from a child actor into a teen um, were very stereotypical. That's the best way that I can describe that. So I became frustrated. Um, and I remember just being kind of bent out of shape by just feeling like I couldn't, I, every role that was offered was the same. Um, so, I kind of, uh, every role that I was offered was the same. So I, you know, I was trying, I'm trying to draw and talk at the same time and I just sound horrible. So I'm just going to talk for a second. Um, every job that I was getting offered was exactly the same. So I started to get to a point where I just got really frustrated. You know, they'd be like, oh, Phil, you got an, an, a, you know, an audition for ER. And I'd be like, oh my God, like I'm going to be on ER. And I'd be super excited. And then I'd get my lines and I'd go in and they'd be like, okay you're on ER, this is an audition for ER. And I'm like, awesome. And they'd be like, okay, you're gonna play a drug dealer named Jamal. And he gets like ran over by a car and then he gets shot after he gets ran over by the car. And then like everybody helps him in the hospital and turns the light around. I'm like, okay, yeah, um, no, I don't wanna play that guy. Then, you know, they'd say, okay, well now you got a, you know, an interview for this show called New York Undercover. And I'm like, awesome, great, awesome. I know that show too. And they'd be like, okay, you're this uh, drug dealer and he gets shot like 50 times, but he manages to live. And then like they shoot his pets and you're like, what? No, like, I don't want to do that either. So <laughs> it kind of just kept going and going. And I make fun of it now, but it was really serious at the time, or at least for me as a teen, I was getting really upset about it. So 
I just decided, oh, wait a minute, hold on. If you guys are noticing, see the names, Bobby Chu, the creator of this art and uh, of this, uh, this app and schoolism and uh, Lightbox and all that is actually drawing with us. So he joined it. So yeah, he's gonna- He's a legend. Some, he's a legend, he's pretty incredible. So the fact is he's drawing with us right now, which is cool. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to say that that's kind of what I ended up doing. I kind of got frustrated. So I, when I came to Long Beach, my goal was to take my art and take my love of film and combine them together. So working later on both, I worked on both Black Panther and A Wrinkle in Time at the same time. So my biggest thing was saying, hey, there's no growing up, there's no adventure stories for a little black boy or a little black girl where they go on an adventure. I'm like, and I used to challenge my friends to name one, like name one, like name something like never ending story that exists where you have a little minority kid that goes on an adventure. And there were none. And so to be able to work on Wrinkle where that was happening and then work on Black Panther and then like, you know, my daughter is now nine, but to see, you know, to see that her first president was Barack Obama and Michelle, like there was so many things changing and happening. There was like Doc McSuffins and all these projects. So full circle moment for me, a long, this was like a long answer to a short question, but full circle moment for me was getting to feel like I had accomplished my goal of working on these projects that were changing the narrative. So I was finally a part of something where I felt like visually we are changing things for the better. So that's kind of how we ended up uh, kind of going along, uh, or that's how I ended up kind of, uh, I think that's one of the things that I'm the most proud of was being a part of that moment in pop culture and seeing how well it was re received as well. Um, I also saw someone saying to walk us, walk through some of the changes I'm just gonna try to do some different uh, hairstyles right now. And I think Jarvis is doing some big rapid shapes. Um, so I'm just gonna go and try and try to change these silhouettes a little bit. So I'm just painting out things that I don't necessarily wanna keep and I'm gonna go in and change them uh, to something else. Uh, we got another question in the Q&A box um, just about what you're creating here. Uh, Samantha's asking what equipment materials are you using? Like, okay. that, like that pen you have, for example, do you use this regularly? So let me see if I can grab this really quick. I am, let me see if I can show you guys this. So here's my screens. I'm using, I've got my computer up here with some reference. That's kind of what I'm working right now. See that, uh, I'm gonna try to it. there we go. I'm using a reference to draw some different African hair. Here's my Cintiq, so this is what I'm drawing on. And then this is my third monitor where I'm looking at all of you guys. So I'm using Photoshop, or sorry, not Photoshop, I'm using the app, the Magma Studio app and my Cintiq to draw. Put this back so you can see you guys. There we go. All right. Uh, um, for me, I'm, on a, I'm using my uh, iMac Pro, the 27 inch screen. Then I have my iPad Pro set up in front of me, which is where I'm, what I'm zooming from. And then I have just your, your standard Wacom tablet. That's pretty much it. It's usually typically how it works. All right, we have another question in the Q and A from uh, Ricky. What's your favorite, uh, your most favorite show you got to work on? Um, favorite show? Um, that's really a hard one because it's like it goes between like on any given day. It's like I loved working on Black Panther. That was fun. Um, I also really loved working on. Uh, I also really loved working on uh, what's it called? Uh, Inception. Inception was really fun to work on. Um, confusing as all hell. I still don't understand that movie. <laughs> I, I remember reading the script like three times and still being like, "Wait, what's happening? Where are we? Are we dreaming? I don't know." Um, but that was kind of that was one of the fun ones that I really enjoyed working on as well. Um, and I think, yeah, that's it. I think I've done so many projects now that I think what I really took away from it is each project, because um, they, they are, it's work and you're trying to also do a good job. But I think each project for me really comes down to uh, what I learned. I really enjoy learning and the process of learning. I love the history of Austin um, and character development. I've been mean, trying to figure out what that is. Um, and so I think that that's been like just a big inspiration to me overall. Um, and, and, and what I, what I value when I walk away from the project, I get to 
be in China for, you know, a few months. And then I get to be in, you know, Africa and learn about tribes. And then I get to, um, I think that's been the big thing too. Is I've, I've enjoyed being able to learn things and, um, and uh, retain the information. So Black Panther was the first project where I felt like, you know, it's the first time I felt like I actually connected to African culture. And it wasn't just something that I, um, it wasn't just something that I was uh, kind of experiencing in a visual way. I was actually learning like, oh, this is the Himba tribe. And they do this and they wear this because of this. And their beads are this color because they represent this. So that was the first time that I felt like I was really understanding um, what that was um, and kind of like, and, and what, what the culture was. Um, and that was a huge moment for me as well, to not be just kind of looking at Africa in a, in a you know, uh, like kind of a bystander way, but actually participating in it was fun. Awesome. We have another uh, couple more questions coming in. Um, hey. All right. One is from uh, Makisha. Black Panther is so iconic. And as a Black female, I was so proud of the way Black females are portrayed as the queens and warriors we are. Are there Black female illustrators you worked with on Black Panther? And are you working with uh, female, uh, Black female, female illustrators on Black Panther 2? Um, so, oh, that's a really good question. So um, there weren't any Black female illustrators on Black Panther, um, the first one, but there are, I'll tell you, I've, I've gotten a really good chance through Lightbox and through Schoolism. I've met a, a lot more Black female illustrators, one of which is Bree Henderson, so you can look up her work, um, and another one named Kristen Garland, uh, both brilliant visual development artists in animation. They do incredible work, environments, characters, you name it, costumes. Um, so there's definitely a lot of them out there, and what we've also sought as we move forward is to showcase them so that people know that they are there and that they are amazing and that they uh, exist. Because I think that that's something that does happen too is people think that you don't exist or that you're not there. It's just like, no, they're, they're really there and they're prominent. Um, and we try to showcase that as best we can um, in trying to kind of build a camaraderie even between us artists all together. So that's something that we've been actively working on um, is to make sure that we have that. Um, you know, moving, especially moving forward. All right, and we have another question uh, from Lauren. What tips do you have for artists who are struggling to define their style? Uh, style, this is a good question. Um, Style, it's hard for me to answer, but the best way I can describe it is, is everyone really focuses on style. Like, especially I remember in school, I was like, what's my style? How do I draw? The first thing that I always tell any student to focus on is not so much how you draw, but the why and what your, like what you love. Like, so you need to find the love for drawing first. That's the most important thing um, is finding that. Past that point, once you find that, um, uh, once you find that and you know what that is, your style will come naturally. Your style is just inherently who you are. So how you draw, what you like to draw, um, uh, what you're going to draw in the future, like, you know, how you translate shapes, all that, that's a natural thing that will happen um, over time. Uh, and you don't have to force it or try to feel like you must find it. It just inherently happens. So I try to focus on saying, get your foundation, get your, uh, your uh, the things that you love to do first. Um, and then also I try to focus on telling students to learn um, as much as they can um, and travel. Travel, get out of your bubble, um, experience life. That's really important. Um, uh, experience family, experience friends, and then, and then with that experience, translate that back into your actual art. 
um, translate that back into what you want to see um, and how you want to represent things in your own artwork. And then style just will come naturally. Um, and you don't have to be locked down by it. And the only reason I say this is that there is something to being like, okay, I need to figure out how I draw personally, but drawing is like how you see, right? So how you see, how you understand its translation. So I just say, try not to put a lot of focus on, you know, what your style is going to be, um, only because it will, in a certain extent, it will take care of itself. You will, you will get it. It just comes naturally. The, and the, the key thing is when you get it, um, or as you're finding it, um, the, 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 the thing that makes it speed up or the thing that makes you get it faster is hard work. So painting and drawing every day, working hard on your craft. Uh, I'm actually gonna tell, like for Jarvis, Jarvis does this a lot. Jarvis works really hard from sunup to sundown. He's constantly working on something new. He's like, oh, there's this new program, Blender. I'm gonna learn it. Oh, there's Maya. Well, I gotta learn, I gotta learn 3D. And he just spends the time that he has besides also balancing family life with learning new skills. So that's the most important thing. Now style, I would say for Jarvis developed over time. It's not like he focuses on like, he has styles he likes, you know, like people and artists he likes, but it's not like you're focusing on, I need to figure out how I draw that all is a part of it. Yeah, most definitely. I think my graphic design background also has played a huge role, even how I'm approaching this image right now. I almost see like large graphic flat shapes first and then I just yeah. build into them, you know? So I could definitely credit that to all the graphic design work that I do. Um, being deeply concerned about silhouettes and things like that, making sure the shapes look interesting, stuff like that. So yeah, style will come if you just keep working hard, you know? And um, sometimes of course, you know, you're finding your way as an artist so you dabble um, in different styles and things like that. But then I always say, try to push that even further, you know, as you're testing things out and discovering more about who you are. So, yeah, but at the end of the day, it just comes naturally um, as you just continue to work at it, work hard at it. Yeah, here it comes. Bobby's in Canada. And so I just want to type, like, at least let him know that we can see him because he's not on the same panel. All right, and we have another question in the Q&A from Chris. Uh, the beach clearly has alumni prowess in the industry. What can the campus do to help professionals working in the field and connect students to professionals? Um, I think events like this, I think, are great. Um, also, I think it's interesting because Long Beach in itself, like, we do always feel like, not like the underdog, but it's like because we've come and there's so many people um, uh, there's so many people I think that come from different schools that whenever you find someone from Long Beach it's like full blown you track them down and you're just like okay come in here like you're like go beach you know like <laughs> we're very much so like we got to stick together so I think having events like this is great um, uh, to uh, to kind of connect everybody um, but I also think, uh, I also think that it is, uh, it's important for the school to kind of like, you know, like, I think right now, like, I will say, I have to give Long Beach credit. Naomi reached out to me for something else before I did an event where I came and went to like a basketball game, right? So just the school reaching out to alumni and then the alumni being willing to, or sorry, the students being willing to kind of show up to events and like kind of engage is really good. And I think also alumni just being willing to give their time to kind of go back and show students that things are possible or to show, because you kind of forget, we don't forget, it's just we're so busy working that I forget what it's like to not know where you're gonna go. Or like forget what it's like to feel like you don't know if you have a direction or 
to have, be stressed every day about like what your style is going to be or what you're going to do when you graduate or you know how it's all going to work out so i think even just having someone share that experience is good because even if it doesn't resonate right now it'll be something that you remember later and that's kind of how that's kind of how it's at least worked for me um i know uh I know that I, um, how do you say, um, uh, there's been several people that I've had in class or in school that visited that I was really excited to see them. Uh, and I didn't understand what they were offering at the time. Uh, like what they were kind of offering, you know, in terms of even just the knowledge they were bringing. Um, I didn't understand it then, but I understood it later. So that's something else that maybe you maybe you won't understand exactly what we're talking about now, but maybe it will click in a year or like when you graduate and you're like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, Phil said or Jarvis said, you know, those are things are all that are important. Um, I had a talk with the organizers here before um, with Sally, because she's in history. Um, uh, I had a talk with her talking about how I still remember my art history teacher from Long Beach, and I think she's still there, it was uh, Karen Kleinfelder, Dr. Karen Kleinfelder. She was an amazing teacher. So if any of you guys have her, or if you know her, please tell her I said hello and that I was very proud to take her class. This is the one art history class that I had where she was really engaging and I remember remembering a lot of the, the knowledge that she taught in class and retaining it. Um, because uh, she taught the class in a way that just made it very, uh, it felt like almost like she was teaching history like gossip. So it felt like, you know, she would link things together, but then when you get to the test, she's like, oh yeah, I remember the date. I know what was happening. I know who was talking to who. Um, stuff like that's important, you know, like, so kind of paying attention to your, your, um, to your instructors, but also realizing that there's going to be things that you're going to remember and kind of take with you. You know, I don't even remember when I had my daughter. I might, I might have had her back in like 2000 five or four and, I, and it's still something I remember to this day um, and beyond. I remember things from elementary school. There was a, a, a guy that came to my elementary school during a rainy day ceremony and this was like in, uh, in uh, first or second grade and he came and he did a little marionette show and he was like Aladdin. So he told the story of Aladdin with marionette puppets. Of course I didn't go into puppetry but I still even to the day I'm going to be 40 next year, I still remember that day. And I remember how awe-inspiring it was and how creative it was, and the characters and all the sets and all of that. So there's something there that's inherently in, in you. And maybe I didn't go into that, but I still remember it. So even for you guys, as you know, eventually becoming alumni yourself or just even being in college, it's important for you to also share that wealth and go back and talk to younger kids or share your experience in college or share your art journey. Um, because they will remember. It's something that it, it's just, it's proven. They will remember. some shapes that I actually want to use. All right, and we do have another question. Okay. Uh, how important is mentorship in creative industries and how should a student approach seeking out mentorship time? Um, Mentorship, I think, is important. Um, I think the hardest thing about, I say, mentorship in my field is that a lot of the times, because I work on so many projects that are NDA, like, you know, like where you can't share anything, it becomes really hard to get approval to have someone kind of shadow you. But I think having mentorship just in general in your career is important because the mentor is there to guide you and kind of help tell you stuff. And it's not just about secrets. It's to just encourage you or to tell you, this feeling of anxiety you're having is normal. Um, uh, I have mentors now that are older than me that have done amazing things, that have been in great careers, and yet the feelings that they have 
uh, after working, you know, some of them like I have one boss, uh, costume designer Ariane Phillips, right? She's one of my good friends now. We've worked together on many projects. She does everything. She does film, she does television, she does fashion shoots, she does uh, editorial shoots. Um, she does just a plethora of things. But you would think that, uh, you would think that she would be, you know, I don't want to say she's insecure. She's secure in her career and she has a great career. But after, after every job, she kind of comes down and she's just like, I'm just worried I'll never work again. So what I learned from that is that is a normal feeling. It's a part of the human condition. It's a part of being an artist. And so what it did for me is whenever I'm feeling that way, I no longer feel as anxious because it's a natural feeling. Meaning I'm not feeling like one day this will go away and I'm just going to walk it. It's like it never goes away. It's just something that's there and it's a part of it. And once you accept that, that becomes the norm. And then you're able to push past those things and kind of become stronger because then you're not focused on like worrying about like, you're like, oh, one day I won't feel this way. Or one day there, the grass is greener on the other side, right? One day there's going to be this day where I wake up and now I've got this career and I'm doing these awesome things and I'm not worried about if I'm going to work again or whatever. No, that's kind of, you know, that's something that it's just natural. So then once it becomes normal, you fight past it. You fight past the feeling of like, I don't know if I can draw today. You fight past the time where you're like, this drawing that I'm doing is ugly and I hate it. You just keep going. You know, that's the best way that I can describe that. Cool, Jarvis. Jarvis is painting all kinds of stuff. Jarvis is also putting in, if you guys are noticing, I'll walk you through. He's doing big graphic shapes, which helps from his uh, graphic design and his uh, fashion background. But he's also layering in uh, textures, if you see, doing overlay texture, textures and stuff like that. Um, and we kind of talked about this maybe being a bride with bodyguards or something like that. So we're kind of maybe turning it into like an Afrofuturistic type kind of wedding thing. So mainly I'm just focusing on doing shapes that I think are interesting. Um, and, you know, eventually I get to just kind of saying, okay, I think I like this shape and then I'll kind of start defining it. But for now, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. All right, we do have another question. Um, how does the success of a project like Black Panther impact your career? Positive or even new challenges? Uh, positive, yes, for sure. Um, I think new challenges also. I think the new challenges that I faced from Black Panther was just being incredibly busy um, and having to, one of the hardest parts about film, I think in all honesty, is just balancing your time time management um, uh, time management is important um, and so I think in this in this job it's important to manage your time but also since I have my wife and my daughter I have to balance the time between working you know all of the responsibilities I have and then I have my family responsibilities as well and I think that sometimes that's the hardest balance in all honesty is everyone in film faces that balance like balance it's hard to find that balance. It's a very hard thing to do. Um, so I think that that's probably the biggest challenge is just as I got more busy, as I had more projects that I could develop um, and work on, um, you know, the more I'm adding to my plate, the more I have to also make sure that I'm still balancing the responsibilities I have. And then also just living, right? Just taking time for life. Just, um, uh, taking the time to be a person, taking the time to play a video game, taking the time to go on a bike ride or, you know, uh, go on a family trip or all of that stuff. All stuff that still, you know, is a struggle, but it's something that you actively work on as you're going on. So how do you guys stay inspired and work through creative blocks is another question. 
Jarvis, you want to answer that one? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, like Phil was saying before, I try to challenge myself to always constantly be learning, learning whether it's learning new programs, learning new techniques, um, pushing myself. Whenever I meet a challenge, I absolutely love it. Um, so that's one of the ways I stay inspired. I stay keep going by constantly challenging myself, never getting comfortable, constantly asking, okay, how could I make this better? You know, what new things can I learn to help push my creative ideas further along? And then also just living life, like Phil was saying, right? Drawing a lot of inspiration from real life, um, hanging out with friends, things like that. Those kind of things really give your help give you the art story you know you're able to pull from life as a result of that um things that inspire rather constantly walking around and i've done it so much that my wife does it too where you see people my man that's a character right there you know just someone has particular features or the way they walk what they're wearing they really stand out um also and then just looking at really good art outside of illustration i look at architecture um, for, it's really nice photography. Like some people just only like I remember, you know, going through Castle Long Beach, and people who wanted to do concept art would only look at concept art, you know. Mm -hmm. But now I want to step out. I want to look at really beautiful paintings. I want to look at sculpture. I want to look at photography, um, architecture. You know, um, just really people designing cars. You know, I just want to expose myself to a lot of different things. Um, so. The wider, the bigger the pool that I can pull from, the easier it is to get through those creative roadblocks, you know? And at the end of the day, just asking yourself, okay, what do I want to say as an artist right now? You just pull from that. And I think that helps just kind of keep you going, keep you inspired. The biggest thing that Jarvis just highlighted there is, uh, is whenever you, this is a key that I've learned that is primarily true and Jarvis just touched on it completely, which is, Whenever you're stuck, it means you stopped learning. That's pretty much the basic thing. There is such a thing as fatigue where you might be just tired, but a lot of the times when you are stuck or creatively flustered, it just means you stopped learning. You kind of phoned it in, you're kind of going through the motion, you're trying to depend on what you already know, and you could be hitting a wall because you're not learning anymore. So whenever I do that, the way that I keep going, oftentimes I'll be working on both projects, right? Or two projects at the same time. So let's say I'm going back and forth between like something like Black Panther and then I go and do a romantic comedy with, you know, Jennifer Lopez. It's two separate things. And sometimes it's really hard to switch between doing like armor and Valkyrie and all that. And then switching to like, you know, evening dresses and, you know, funny little gag costumes like, or gag, you know, where they're like, there's some comedy involved or something. The only way to really switch between those things too, sometimes I need either a palate cleanser or like, which I'll like, I'll read something or do something in between, or I'll make something for myself. Like say I'm going from the romantic comedy to Black Panther. Before I start Black Panther, I'm like, what am I working on today? And I might do a whole little composition, a mood board or a board of African hair. So I'll just put a bunch of pictures together of African hair or African mask or African beadwork or whatever. And then I look at it and I try to decipher like, okay, what culture is this? What's the shape language? okay, African masks are very simplified. They're very graphic. So I try to get myself in that mind. And then when I learn something that inspires me, um, it also inspires you to learn because then you can turn the learning from something historical into something conceptual. So when you think about concept artists, like Jarvis said, you can't be a great concept artist if you just study concept art. It's like you can't be a great artist if you only copy and draw art from other artists, because you'll never learn what those artists were looking at, if that makes sense, right? So you can't learn to draw anatomy by just drawing comic book characters, because that guy that was drawing the comic book character was learning and studying figurative anatomy and learning it and then um, exploiting it or um, uh, exaggerating it, right? But you'll never be able to do that if you don't know those foundations. So the same thing happens with learning. You can, if you, um, I give you an example. I tell this story often. Uh, Michael Kaplan, the costume designer from Star Trek, wanted to draw some weird conceptual shape onto the Vulcan women, like something that flattened them out that made them look a little bit more androgynous. Um, and I asked him why. And he said, because throughout history, he gave me a history lesson, that throughout history, female clothing primarily has been 
looked at through what men look at, through the male gaze, right? So, uh, and then female clothing is accentuated in areas that men find attractive. So like you have a bustle for a big butt or big hips, or, you know, you have a brassiere or a corset for a small waist or, you know, big bosom, like all that, right? So it's all these different shapes that kind of make the female form exaggerated, right? So he said in that instance, he's like, what do Vulcan men find attractive? And Vulcan men, Vulcans like intellect. So he said, I want to elongate their neck, the female's neck. I want to flatten them out here. So it's not about that. It's not about the shape of their body or anything sexual. I want to highlight the thing they value most, which is the head, which holds the brain. And I thought that was the most brilliant conceptual thing I had ever heard. Um, and he took history and took history and turned it into concept. So do you guys get what I'm saying? It's like he learned something and then he expanded it into outer space. So that's kind of something that I learned from that. And I've carried that lesson with me. And I try to, whenever I'm stuck, it just means I don't have that. It means I haven't learned something to where I'm getting bored or I'm not excited. Um, and then when you find that again, then you just move right back into it. So I hope that that helps you with that question. Because I think a lot of the times people are like, oh, you know, just go and do some jumping jacks or something. I like, I don't know that, <laughs> but that works for some people. I think for me, it just, I have to constantly challenge myself to keep learning. Hey, Phil, the brush that's here, is that kind of pretty much the only brush that's in the program? I think so. You just adjust those sliders up there. Yeah, um, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's other ones or if you have to add. Oh, see, yeah, see how it says one, oh. two, three, four, five? We'd have to yeah. add brushes. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Trip, I got an idea. All right, so we have another few uh, questions. Okay. Uh, is there something that either of you have placed on the shelf of your personal creative vault and brought out years later? If yes, do you feel good about that decision to shelve something that you felt you weren't ready to share with the world? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I shelve all of Jarvis's work because I don't think any of it should be shared with the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just had to get them. Me and Jarvis clown each other all the time, so I had to try, try and get them once. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know. I think, I mean, I'm pretty candid about my work. Um, I do teach a class with a uh, concept, uh, uh, sorry, concept, uh, not necessarily the Khan Academy, uh, CGMA. So um, I teach with uh, uh, um, CGMA, and I teach a costume, a costume class. Uh, hey, Ethan. Um, yeah, I teach, I, Ethan is one of my students from CGMA, so I'm glad he's here. Um, it's CG Master Academy, it's another online uh, school. Um, I, I'm trying to see how I can describe it. Um, It's such a, that's such a good question I'm trying to figure out like with the shelving of things. Um, I teach a class and in my last semester of that class, I made sure to do a demo or a lecture that just shows the progression of my work so that students could see that you don't start, like what you end up seeing us do now isn't where we started. So there's gonna be work where I'm like, ooh, that drawing is awful. Or look at those arms. They're like, oh man, that proportion was really bad. But it's good to see those things because that's how you get better. And then later on, you're able to kind of expand and learn and grow based on being able to look at your work. So I don't know if I have much work that I've shelved. I think there's a few things where I'm just like, yeah, no, I'll never show, share that um, just because they're work in progress. But for the most part, I'm pretty candid and open about that. So um, what about you, Jarvis? Do you have anything? Usually if I'm shelving, it's because of time. I just yeah. have <laughs> got a chance. You know, you already know being a, 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 a husband, a father, multiple kids, and you have all your personal projects, I mean, uh, like work projects and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, we have to make money and pay bills. So yeah. we can't just play on our personal projects all the time. That's right. Um, but uh, so usually that's the reason why. I have multiple things now that I can't wait to get back to. Um, so, yeah, but usually if I'm shelving, that's usually why. Yeah, it's just shelving it out of just, just time. 
have just many things. There's a meme where, you know the meme um, where it's the, it's the famous meme where it's like the, the guy and he's with the girl, he's with, holding the hands with the one girl, but he's looking back at the other girl mm -hmm. walking by. Mm -hmm. There's a meme for artists where it's that same thing, but he's, so he's walking with his girlfriend is projects that he, uh, that he's already started and hasn't finished. And then the girl mm -hmm. he's looking at is a new pro like some new idea. Yeah. So it's basically like, I'd say if anything, it's just like that. Like I'll have all these yep. projects where I'm like super excited about it when I get only halfway through. And then I'm like, ooh, I got another idea. And then I just show mm -hmm. them until I go back to them or don't, you know. Yeah, pretty much. No problem, Chris, thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, and we have another question. Um, who do you ask for feedback on your designs? What feedback have you found most helpful over the years? What about you, Darvis? You do like MIDI, like friends, what do you do? Um, well, I usually have a couple people who I'll send stuff to just to get feedback. Um, Phil is one of them. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the client. But I have Phil, another friend of mine, who uh, he's an art director for EA, the video game company up in Vancouver. Um, so I'll send stuff to him as well. So other than that, you should just have a couple of good art friends who I know have a good eye, especially if it's a particular thing that they're really skilled at. Like Phil is really skilled in the costume area. So if I'm working on things like that, it's a couple of album covers that I did several years ago where I was doing like kind of what I'm doing right now. I have that same kind of vibe. And um, I reached out to Phil and got some really good advice. I know he had a really good eye for that. So yeah, just have a couple good friends, really talented in particular areas, and uh, just reach out to them. So that's always a big help for me. Sam, I mean, I'm dealing with, I'm working primarily in costumes. So my art director is basically the costume planner. So I'm not just on an island designing stuff on my own. I'm usually trying to help sell and relate the ideas of the costume designer then there's some things that I'm inputting and saying like, okay, it could be this or that. So we're kind of like, it's a big collaboration, right? And you're kind of going back and forth and kind of working with those people um, while also trying to sell and develop and do all of these different things. So I think it's it's kind of a toss up, but you definitely shouldn't be your own, your own island. You should try if possible to, um, to have at least a couple of people you trust, like Jarvis said, that you can kind of bouncing off of so that you're not lost. Yeah, sometimes you can stare at an art uh, work of art so long that you don't even really see what's wrong anymore. You don't and see it takes it some, some fresh eyes to look at it. I'm like, hey, it you know that really nose does. is kind of off. <laughs> you're like, oh, I didn't even see that anymore. Yeah, that's something that, yeah, or people see faces and stuff you didn't see, or they're like, man, the head's way too small. There's always something. So Phil hits me up a lot asking for advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we still have that one project that we're not even going to name, Phil, that you... Um, <laughs> I know, I'm give, sorry. Give, give me my credit. <laughs> <laughs> Jarvis helped me on a project and he will not let me live it down at all. Phil so and Jarvis, thank you so much for cup up on the hour so are you guys willing to continue um maybe i'll take a few more questions but i do i have to okay. actually do another one so i have to I have to jump in a little bit um, okay so maybe a few more questions all right so also too while i have the chance make sure you guys go and try this app what we're using you guys can do right now with all your friends you can go to matter of fact let me see if i can actually have this oops if I can um, share a link. Actually, Ethan, Ethan, are you still here? Can you share a link to the uh, website while I'm still drawing and answering questions, if possible, or any or anyone that's already gone? You just type in, type in. I forget that it's like magmastudio.io or something like that, but I don't want to type the wrong thing for you guys. So it's a free website, and you guys can all do this now. You can literally go and invite your friends and draw directly with each other. All right, we do have another question here. Um, okay. How do you know a design has been successful or really how do you stop creating and accept the work is complete enough? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you guys for posting. Um, I don't know if you ever know. I feel like even there's stuff that I look back on and I'm like, I still don't think that's complete. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the movie's done out, you know, there's costumes of it. I, there's things that you can be proud of for sure, but I don't know. I think it's a, it's, it's a, me a mix between time, right, Jarvis? Like, like kind of yeah, like pretty much. <laughs> time and you just stop looking at it. <laughs> yeah, you just stop looking at a certain point, you just the, stop. Yeah. Um, sometimes you get to it, you're like, okay, I feel like, I don't know, you gotta find that fine line between doing too much and like, okay, what am I trying to say with this piece? And do I feel like it's saying everything I wanted to say? Or right. did I capture the feeling or the mood that I'm going for? And once that's done, um, you just gotta stop. Yeah, it's kinda hard, you just kinda gotta walk away from it. And usually what stops us is we have a new idea, like we talked about earlier. So yeah. it's like, all right, I just kinda wanna stop now because I'm gonna jump on or something else. Or if it's something, particular skill I'm trying to master in that project. So once I master that skill, then I'm like, all right, let me go on to the next. Yeah. Like you gotta keep going, you can't get hung up on one thing. It's important what he's saying. I teach my students the same thing when we're doing thumbnail sketches for, or we're trying to figure out new ideas. I just try to teach everyone to not be precious. Like if you've started to spend too much time on that one thumbnail or that one idea, it's time to move on. It means you're noodling. It means that you're getting stale. Mm -hmm. So you just need to keep moving. And I don't know if you guys know what I mean more thumbnails. I'm saying like you're drawing a costume and you're just trying to figure out ideas just lay out your figure a bunch over time and just draw, 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 draw. And if you start, oh, I'm going to stay here and you start really getting into one, throw it away. Like, throw it away and do another one. Um, no problem, Ricky. Thank you for coming. Um, so that's kind of incredible. Good job, there. This is awesome. Um, like, looking back. I'm beneath your wings, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> the wing. The wind. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, sure, let's uh, let's wrap it up with one more question. Okay. Um, how do you keep up with so many projects? Do you have assistance? <laughs> Me, myself, and I. <laughs> Those are my assistants. Um, family helps, so my wife's really supportive. She makes sure that my daughter is doing stuff, especially now because we're all at home. So with COVID and not being in school, she's been handling a lot of that. Um, I think that that's just having a strong support network is really great. And that's what I have here. And I think Jarvis would agree. So yeah, definitely. Like even now I, I gave earlier on, I gave my wife the signal and um, she grabbed the kids and took them in another room. To yeah. Like, like, <laughs> it's like, it's starting to go down. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, but yeah. staying, staying organized, staying disciplined. Um, yeah. When it's time to work, you got to work, you know, at the end of the day. So, and then just trying to right. not, not take too much on yourself. Uh, yeah, so it's an ongoing thing that you're constantly just trying to, it's a balancing act. You're just constantly trying to balance things out. Man, I wish I could switch the brushes up. <laughs> <laughs> I know I say the same thing. I usually yeah, use so, a brush that's more square, so I'm just trying to kind of figure this out. I like want to add some spotted like textures to it. I got went and grabbed some triangles, created some triangles and illustrators, took them to Photoshop and then brought them in here, but I want to do more. You guys can also see too, for the most part, like it's different styles. Jarvis is doing very graphic. I'm just trying to figure stuff out. And I think that's the other thing too. I don't think you guys should be afraid of just trying to figure stuff out. Put something down, move on, start something else. Like, I think that there is something to be said when students get too precious. You get precious and you start saying, it has to look amazing. No, it doesn't. It literally doesn't. Um, I get in there and I scratch stuff out. I mess up. I'm just like, I don't know if I like this. I just try to silhouette mm -hmm. draw and try stuff out until I find something I like and then yeah. I develop. So try to find your design. Yeah, and First. then do not do not fall in love in one part of your piece because that may be the piece yes. that you need to take out to make it better. So exactly. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Great. Well, this piece looks amazing. I want to thank you guys for um, doing this with us today to close out our Founders Week activities. Um, thank you so much for your time and definitely, hopefully soon we will do an industry chat with the group and talk a little bit more about your careers. Um, yes. One. No, go ahead, Philip. Oh, no, I was just saying, yes, no, please, please let 
Uh-huh. I'd love I'd love to come back and talk to the students and maybe bring some friends so that we can talk further, um, including maybe even Bobby and Kay, uh, so that you guys could talk to them because I know that some of you really like schoolism and know Bobby and Kay. So I'd love to get that. Uh, I'd love to bring Jarvis back and all of our friends and see if we can bring some of the alumni back and do this again. It'd be really fun. Wonderful. And one question before we go: If people want to connect with you on LinkedIn, are you on LinkedIn? Ooh. Like, so this is what I'll say. The best way I can answer LinkedIn questions is like, as an artist, LinkedIn to me feels like Skynet. Like, I never know how it works. It just seems like it runs runs itself. And I'm sure it's going to turn into a Terminator. Like, I'm very positive. Um, I'd say the best way to reach me is Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram and you want to just write me um, or ask me questions, I usually will be able to get to it. But I don't respond right away. It's just because my inbox is like, a lot, but I do try to respond to students. So you can reach me at uh, Phil underscore Boutte. What about Jarvis? Stop it, Jarvis. Jarvis. Don't you don't you laugh at my name? Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) It's not often I get to hear you say it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you again for your time. We appreciate it, and this was amazing. Thank you again. Wait a minute. No problem. Follow Jarvis. Jarvis, tell him you're in. Oh, oh um, so my Instagram is J Maurice. So J M A U R I C E underscore art. So that's where you can find all my artwork. That'd be the most updated uh, place. So once again, that's J Maurice underscore art. A R T. There you go. Great. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks and everybody. You could find um, videos of our past activities during this week on our website shown on the screen. So thank you. And thank, All right. thank you to CSU. Thanks for having me. Go Beach. Long <laughs> Beach State. Go Beach, go Beach. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>